This is the APL Concept X, the latest basketball shoe in a line of basketball shoes that have been banned by the NBA for an apparent performance advantage that's given to anybody that puts them on. But my biggest question as a foot doctor is, you know, over 10 years since these have been banned by the NBA, has modern sneaker technology kind of caught up to them and are they still giving people a real performance advantage? Number two, is that performance advantage actually going to do anything for you on the basketball court or is it all just numbers? Does the overall playability of these shoes actually improve your game versus others and are they worth the price tag for that performance advantage? So let's get into it. Now the first thing you'll notice about the Concept X is the uppers and how they look quite a bit different than most of their basketball shoes out there. And that's because they're not made of synthetic paneling or foxing or different type of TPU panels. They're actually stitched embroidered fibers going all the way through the shoe. Now these get really chunky and really thin. They go from very strong and tight and non-elastic to very elastic fibers in the vamp of the uppers. Now the one thing I notice is, yeah, these do give quite a strong lockdown, especially for kind of the more elastic feeling and looking of the shoe. When I first kind of took them out of the box, I thought these are gonna have zero side to side stability. However, because the stitching goes all the way through the shoe and the shoe kind of acts as one envelope, it does give quite a good lockdown. The only bad part is, is the entry into them is pretty difficult. And once you do break that entry in, the ankle collar up here, that high top ankle collar does start to expand out and you just don't get a real good lockdown ceiling feel around your ankle. Now, the lockdown is actually still good around the midfoot and the ankle of the shoe. It's just that the elastic ankle collar starts to wobble around your high ankle. And that kind of gave me a little bit of pause because if it's doing it up in my ankle, is it doing it down here in the foot, even though there is stitching all around it. So I think it was more mental versus functional. Uh, however, I, I did notice if you are going to buy these, I probably would switch the laces out because in a system like this, where you have to have the entire shoe giving you stability, you can't have laces be that thin. So I would pick up a chunkier pair of laces. I will leave some link in the description below. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high script sandpaper, I mean, I thought the Dremel was gonna rip right through this. However, it didn't. The stitching on here is really well done. And this is a very high build quality type upper. So the drag guard, even though it is just made of stitched yarns, it is really darn durable. So, I mean, especially for the price point of these around 400 bucks, I mean, at least the build quality of the uppers you can tell is very, very good. But let's be honest, the reason you clicked on this video was to see the midsole tear down of these. Now, this is a three layer midsole and it does have that load and launch technology, of course, in the four foot. Now, this has eight springs, an EVA carrier, and then a hinge plate that goes on the top all the way to the mid part of the shoe and then kind of comes down in the forefoot. You can actually see the hinge pin right here in the mid part of the shoe and actually is seen a lot better on the other side of the shoe, the other side of the teardown. Now that allows that spring plate to act as one. So all those springs now act as one giant spring under the fore part of your shoe and you can actually see the spring sticking out right here. And I did count there were all eight in there. And the one that's missing is the one directly under the central part of the forefoot because usually you're on one side of the shoe or the other. So I guess you just don't need one right there. However, they also have two layers of foam on top and the bottom. Now this is what they call future foam, which is a proprietary compound. I couldn't find exactly what it is made of, the exact materials. It does feel like a very elastic type EVA blend on both sides. It does feel like a very low density elastic foam on the white side as well as a very high density elastic foam on the green side of the foam. But remember the springboard apparatus and both densities of foam are also cut in the middle by a true full length carbon fiber plate, which is ridiculously thick. Now it's not molded, it is just a straight carbon fiber plate. However, it does give quite a bit of stiffness to the shoe and a decent bit of cantilever. And I promise I'll get to the shuttle and jump height test in a second to test the performance of these. However, to understand that performance, you have to understand the outsole treads of these. Now this is translucent lucent rubber and it is only a one millimeter tread depth. Now it does have these kind of lunar base type patterns here, these circular suction cup patterns in the forefoot, then the rest of it is almost kind of like the same embroidery type pattern throughout the entire outsole of the shoe. It is continuous and it is clear rubber. It also has a really thick outsole base lateral flange, which is nice for stability. However, if you look at it on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high script sandpaper, the Dremel just bites right through at a millimeter of damage on a millimeter tread depth. So it just bottoms the tread depth right out. And also because of the pattern of it and kind of the block style pattern in the forefoot, and because it is so thin, 
it just does not have as much surface area to grab number one an outdoor court but even on an indoor court i found that number one they pick up dust like crazy but number two the traction just isn't as grabby or squeaky as some other shoes it just does not give that real stop on a dime type performance you definitely give a little bit i noticed me on an outdoor court or an indoor court i was sliding a little bit now i, I would say if you use a traction mat that's going to help out a lot and if the indoor court is not dusty that's going to help out a lot but anything more than a perfect court you are going to find yourself moving on these now if you look at the jump height test on these now that i've talked about this i got 43 centimeters on these which is great it's one of the most elite shoes i've tested this year however on the same day i brought the kt8s back out after i tested these and the kt8s once again i got 44 centimeters on those so there really wasn't a performance increase at least for me and i did 10 jumps on this 10 jumps on the KT8, came around 43 on these, 44 centimeters on the KT8. Both great shoes, but from a standing position, I didn't find that there was much more of a performance increase from this versus on the KT8, and if there was, I think it was the carbon fiber plate that was doing a lot of that work. Now, if you look at the shuttle test though, that honestly, the numbers were even worse. I got 14.95 seconds on that, Whereas on some other shoes, I'm getting into the very low 14s. Now, the reason for that was is because I was sliding all over the place on turns. I was losing so much time on cornering. You can just see the shoe was just sliding right out from underneath of me. However, when you look at me coming back on the court, coming toward the camera, it almost looks like I sped up the footage. That's how quick these shoes get when you start putting energy into them. And that's where the performance increase comes. It comes on straight line speed or when you're putting more energy into the shoe. So in terms of a running shoe, yes, these are completely a performance enhancing device and they will enhance performance more than other shoes. Even the Alpha Flies, the Vapor Flies, the Primex Strung, you know, these are definitely a performance enhancing device because of the dynamic springs in them. And I think that's where the distinction and why they were originally banned by the NBA in 2010 and 2011. Because I think versus the shoes in 2010 and 2011, yes, the technology in this was probably so far advanced from that that they were kind of a performance enhancing device. However, shoes nowadays, I think have kind of caught up to the APLs to the point where, I mean, honestly, for me, I was performing much better in the KT8 and even the Air Del Dawn that day where I was testing all three out on court just because they were the all around better basketball shoes. The silhouette of the shoe and everything else around them gave me better performance. Yes, if I was running up and down the court in the APLs, I could barely feel myself running and I felt like I was like jogging on the moon. It was crazy. So yeah, if you are going up for a layup and then trying to go defend all the way on the other side of the court, then yes, these are gonna give you an inherent advantage. If you're under the hoop trying to get a rebound or just trying to create space for yourself or trying to make really quick tight moves or just really trying to outhandle somebody, then no, I don't think these are any better than any mid-range basketball shoe out there. It's just for what they do best, they do it so much better than every other shoe. Just remember, you're not gonna get a lot of court feel in these. They're carbon fiber, two layers of foam, and a springboard plate and apparatus in there. So there's a lot between you and the ground on these. But speaking of their performance, you have to look at their fit. If you are someone that's narrow or medium, you can just go true to size on these and you should be okay. The bad part is, like I said, the ankle collar is just not gonna wrap around your ankle as tight as you want it to, kind of give you that real enveloping feel. If you are a 2E foot, I probably would still just try to go true to size on these and break in the uppers. They're gonna be a hard break in and they're gonna be a really hard entry into them. But in terms of going up sizes on these it's really tough on them because number one you need a one-to-one -one fit for the springboard plate if that's what you want to use them for and number two you have to have the ankle be able to kind of wrap around you especially because of the design of the uppers and how it locks you into the shoe now if you are somebody with really bad ball of foot pain or somebody with more arthritis in your big toe joint then yeah these are going to take a lot of pressure off of that for someone like that i think these are tremendous however if you are somebody with heel pain you do have pretty dense foam right underneath of you plus a carbon fiber plate right underneath that. So, you know, the shock absorption on these is not great in the rear foot. It is in the forefoot because you have literal springs underneath of you, underneath that carbon fiber. So I would say for the real niche player, somebody, like I said, with ball of foot pain arthritis in their big toe joint arthritis in their forefoot, yeah, these are going to help preserve your feet. And I just noticed with me too, you know, if my legs were getting tired that day, I could still run up and down the court pretty easily in these and didn't really feel it in my legs whatsoever. But if you are someone that just needs a little bit more help getting up and down the court or someone that's just trying to preserve of your legs up and down the court just trying to keep playing then yeah I think these are more of a career pro 
prolonging shoe more than a performance enhancing shoe. But this shoe more than any other this year, I'd love to know your opinion. Do you think they're worth the $400 price tag that comes along with them? And do you think that these have enough in them that it will improve, or I should say prolong your game that you're worth spending that kind of money? Let me know in the comments down below. And speaking of the other shoes we've tested while I was testing this shoe, if you do wanna see the complete performance review and teardown of the KT8, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and performance enhancing or career elongating devices. I'll see you in the next one.